Chubby Nerds Unite! Now, this video is going to be a little bit of a different one, okay? It may come off as a little angry, may not. I don't know yet, but all I know is, is right now, I'm just like, <sighs> let me just throw this out there to Mr. Tom Holland. Tom Holland? May I call you Tom? I don't feel like calling you Mr. Holland because it's like, I mean, I'm older than you. I mean, at this point, I'm a grandpa. I've got like three gray hairs. That basically makes me ancient, right? Nonetheless, Tom, shut your fucking mouth. Shh, shh, shh. Shut it. Tom, please. If there's anything that we've learned over the past few years about asking Tom Holland questions regarding Spider-Man or anything else that he's involved in. It's that he says too much. Tom, shut your fucking mouth. Oh, thank you for letting me get that off my chest. We got an article here. I'm a day late, uh, but none the, nonetheless, a dollar short, as always. We got an article from Entertainment Weekly written by uh, Devin Coggin, Devon Coggin. Again, we know how horrible I am with the names. Uh, it was written yesterday. It is an exclusive titled. Tom Holland opens up about Spider-Man No Way Home and facing off against Alfred Molina. Again, Tom. Okay, now that I've taken a moment to calm down a little bit, we're going to read through this article. And if he spoils anything, I swear to bejeebus, I'm going on strike. I'm going to write a blog that no one will read. I'm gonna go on strike by myself as no one will join me against Mr. T. Holland for always speaking too much. Speak afterward, like let the movie come out. Let us have the experience and then talk about these things. The only reason why these people, these publications are coming out to you to ask you these fucking questions because they know that you have a history of spoiling shit. Anyway, Tom Holland made a new friend on the set of Spider-Man No Way Home, or is that an old enemy? The 25-year-old actor suited up again for his third solo Spidey film, this one picking up after Peter Parker's secret identity went public in 2019. Far from home. As Peter scrambles to take control of his life, he finds himself facing off against familiar foes, including Alfred Molina's Doc Ock reprising his eight-limbed role from 2004's Spider-Man 2. A glory as it be. Holland, who didn't start slinging webs until 2016, couldn't help but geek out over the veteran Molina, calling him one of my favorite people I've ever worked with. Okay, I'm cool with that because I love me some Alfred Molina's too. It was really fun to watch him see how technology has advanced, Holland adds. When he was making these films, the arms were puppets. And when we did it, they're all imaginary and CG. See, now that makes me worried. But then again, I'm like, well, you know, the CG in the Spider-Man movies, like, it, it rarely looks like super rubbery to me. CG's pretty good. Uh, it was quite cool to see him relive it, but also relearn it. Ooh, look, we got a cool new picture of uh, Miss MJ and Spider-Man. Okay. That mix of past and present is key to No Way Home in theaters December 17th, a day after my birthday. A happy birthday it will be, trust and believe. Although the actor won't reveal exact plot points. He'll still say too much. The film's trailer has hinted at some potential 
crossover shenanigans, mixing elements from both the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield films. For Holland, it's an opportunity to pay tribute to previous iterations of the character while also taking Peter in a new direction, i.e. Um, leaving Marvel and primarily sticking to Sony. Methinks. Um, 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 uh. The first film, director John Watts and I were sort of flying by the seat of our own pants, Holland says. This one, I think we both felt really confident, so we were able to relax. We actually had so much more fun on this one than we did on the previous two. Well, yeah, because you're introducing all these crazy Spider-Verse elements, and I can't freaking wait to see it. Uh, in No Way Home, Peter is trying to juggle his newfound infamy, schoolwork, and his burgeoning relationship with MJ, played by Zendaya. He turns to Benner... Oh, Benedict. <laughs> Sorry. He turns to Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange for a magical fix, inadvertently triggering a cascade of universe-threatening problems, adding mythical portals and sorcerers to Spider-Man's normally down-to-earth world allowed Holland and Watts to get more inventive than ever. And Holland teases that the fight scenes are a lot more visceral, with a lot more hand-to-hand -hand combat. Listen, I'll believe it when I see it, okay? And you better, because you, you can't get... Ooh. I if there's one thing that always bugs me about a lot of these movies, I mean Marvel does it pretty well. Uh DC, it's like, you know, it's always it's always a hit or miss. It depends on what your interests are. You may or may not like Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. The ultimate edition is the only one that counts. Uh, you may or may not like Justice League. The Snyder Cut is the only one that counts. But um, the one thing that I always pay the most attention to, and I think a lot of people do, is how they handle the combat between people. I personally can't stand jump cutty fight scenes. Like the Bourne series with Matt Damon, like those movies are fun and all, but I can't, the, the rewatchability of those movies for me is like gone because like they were one and dones for me because it's just like it, th the stories of those movies are interesting, but it's just all ruined with the fight scenes. You can't relish in any of it because there's so many fucking jump cuts. What John Wick does is that's my jam, okay? That's my jam. I wanna live in the moment, okay? Just kind of like, I mean, it's it's not similar, but in my mind right now, because it's fresh and I just watched it recently, uh, the end of Squid Game, the last episode of Squid Game between the two main characters, just fucking having an all out brawl within the diamond of the Squid Game, this crazy knife fight. And it's just like these, these perfectly placed shots, making sure that you're seeing the visceralness of what it is that's happening. You're not doing all these crazy cutaways to add tension, because to me, it doesn't add tension at all. It takes away from the tension. When I can sit there and I can stare at these motherfuckers just beating the living shit out of each other, that's my tension, because then I'm just like, oh my God. Well, he got stabbed. You know, it's like you can live in the moment as if you were there. That's the purpose of going to a movie to me is that I want to forget about the world around me and I want to live in the moment of what it is that I'm watching. So I really hope that, you know, what he says is true and they really are going to uh, really up the ante. Uh, in the hand hand combat department. All right, so let's keep going with the article. No Way Home marks Holland's third solo Spidey appearance. And story wise, the actor calls it a conclusion to his trilogy, wrapping up the narrative he and Watts first introduced in 2017's Homecoming. And this is the quote. This is the quote that made me want to make this fucking video. <laughs> and it reads as follows, okay? 
we were all treating No Way Home as the end of a franchise, let's say, he adds. I think if we're lucky enough to dive into these characters again, you'd be seeing a very different version. It would no longer be the Homecoming trilogy. We would give it some time and try to build something different and tonally change the films. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. But we were definitely treating No Way Home like it was coming to an end and it felt like it. Now I'm going to tell you how I interpret. I hinted at it earlier. I interpret those words as I've seen many others interpret it the same way. I interpret it that you're not going to see Tom Holland Spider-Man in these Marvel movies either anymore or for the time being, like for right now. There's so many, so many movies that are coming out with Marvel right now. There's so many characters that they are building to introduce. We've got the Fantastic Four, which, you know, the director of this series is going to be going to take care of that. It's a lot of characters within itself. Okay. We've got Shang-Chi that just came out. Totally new fucking character was just introduced to everybody to great worldwide reception, right? We've got, you know, the, the, the other characters that are branching off into their own thing. The multiverse is happening. You know, we've got uh, Doctor Strange and the multiverse of madness that who knows what that's going to introduce. We've got the new blade, you know, that we've heard nothing about that's still coming. We've got all of these things. The Eternals are like around the freaking corner. Totally new characters also. Point is, is that we have a whole new era of Marvel films coming. And in my mind, it makes sense that they would spend the time to properly end Holland's consistency in the current universe that they would properly end that with no way, no way Home and properly titling it No Way Home. Because to me, that essentially means, if any of you have seen Venom at this point, spoilers, if you haven't seen Venom, Let There Be Carnage, but the end of Venom, Let There Be Carnage literally reveals that Tom Holland, Spider-Man and Venom are in the same universe. Now, how they're going to expand on that, I have no idea. I have thoughts. I think that pretty much this is going to be like the swan song, for lack of a better you know, phrase, right? To the Spider-Man we know of that palled it up with characters such as Captain America, such as Tony Stark, you know, we're basically, or they're basically, I believe, are using this movie to branch him away from these characters, these emotions that he's had, the loss of Tony Stark. You know, we didn't go into the whole Uncle Ben situation, but we know that, you know, that that's a part of Spider-Man's character. Um, we're, we're, they're in the process, I believe, again, of just moving him away from all of that and bringing him into a whole different reality. And I believe that if they were to do that and something happens in No Way Home, pulling Spider-Man out of that universe and just totally painting it as there's literally no way for him to return to the life that he once knew, but now living in an environment, in an existence of pretty much being on his own because you can't bring Aunt May, you know? I mean, it's, I guess they could. I mean, you could write it in a certain way, but in my mind, I am just leaning more towards the idea of like, okay, well, Spider-Man, he's got to grow up, right? Tom Holland can't be, you know, kid Spider-Man forever, right? We've got Miles Morales for that whenever they decide to, you know, jump into that storyline. But I really believe that this is, probably going to be the pinnacle of the coming of age story where it's you're done going through the process of coming of age but is now he's just going to be thrust 
into a world where he has to be solely independent. He can't depend on Aunt May anymore. He can't depend on any of the Avengers anymore. Okay. Who knows if he can depend on Venom? I mean, we know that Venom, you know, Venom goes back and forth, right? Venom like wants to bite people's heads off and shit, but you know, he bites the heads off of, you know, bad people and shit. So who knows anything else can happen, you know, but I really believe that he, they're just going to use this to pull him out of Marvel. He's going to go directly into the Sony universe, you know, with Morbius and all of these things that Sony is also building on their own. You know, this whole thing with bringing Venom into the Marvel universe for now, I think is literally just a gateway to be able to pull Spider-Man into his universe and then they'll be in the same realm. They'll still, you know, be in New York or whatever, but just in, not in the same way. I don't think that the Avengers will exist because if you know it's like you have to you almost if you're gonna go through all of this to kind of differentiate and you know do this whole buildup of no way home it's like you they almost have to put him in a totally different universe and give him totally different circumstances and take away the crutch of being able to call a fucking avenger to come and help him save the world so i interpret that this is what he means by the comment. I'll read it again. I'll read it again. You interpret it in your own way. This is just my interpretation. Uh, he said, we were all treating No Way Home as the end of a franchise. Marvel, let's say. He adds, I think if we were lucky enough to dive into these characters again in Sony, you'd be seeing a very different version. Sony. It would no longer be the Homecoming trilogy, which is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We would give it some time and try to build something different and tonally change the films, i.e. Venom. Venom is totally fucking different from the Homecoming trilogy. Morbius hasn't come out, but it's pretty clear that it is very different from the Homecoming trilogy. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. where did I leave off? Sorry, I don't know if you heard my phone ring. My phone's ringing. I'm, I'm now gonna like, ugh, I gotta hurry up and finish this. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta attend to that phone call. Um, whether that happens or not, I don't know. But we were definitely treating No Way Home like it was coming to an end and it felt like it. I believe that. But I wish that he wasn't saying this. Don't say these things to let us speculate. We already kind of feel like this is what's happening. But like, I just I just feel him coming out and saying some shit like this. It's just, well, like, don't take away the mystique of it yet. You know, we have a feeling that the new Spider-Man are going to be in the movie. They might not be, but we have a we pretty much feel like it's going to happen. We've got a feeling that Green Goblin, Willem Dafoe, is going to be in the movie and play the character again. But all they've shown us is the pumpkin ball. But that could mean anything, right? We got a pretty good feeling that it's going to be Willem Dafoe, though. There's no fucking concrete evidence, but we feel like it is. Love this picture, by the way, of Doctor Strange and Spidey. All right. Holland adds that he felt that finality while filming, especially during one of his last days on set, shooting a scene with Zendaya and Jacob Batalon, who's reprising his role as Peter's best friend, Ned. When the scene finally wrapped, all three actors found themselves getting emotional. <sighs> Stop it. We've been making these films for five years now, Holland explains. We've had such an amazing relationship, the three of us. We've been with each other every step of the way. We've done every single film, every single press tour. So this one scene, we didn't know if this would be the last time we were all working together. <sighs> Him jumping into the next fucking universe. Like, stop saying this. Oh, this is making me so like aggravating. Or aggravated, <laughs> that's stupid. It's making me so aggravated. See, I'm like so like verklempt. I don't know what the fuck to say. This is the problem with the internet. Is just like this information is just here. Like, sure, I don't have to be reading this article, but I couldn't avoid it. I I saw the, the, this quote without even reading this article. Like, it was just random. I'm like, what? So I can't use the computer anymore if I don't want shit spoiled for me. Apparently, 
I can't, you know, scroll through my fucking Facebook timeline without seeing some shit like this. <sighs> like, it's different if the movie comes out and I chose not to see it and I'm waiting to see it and something gets spoiled. That's my fault. But if we have, like, the star of the movie just spouting shit months before the movie comes out, I mean, the ball's kind of not in my court at that point. You know what I'm saying? It was heartbreaking, but also really exciting because we're all moving into the next chapter of our careers. So sharing that moment with them was maybe the best day I've ever had on set. I don't think I've cried like that ever. Stop it. It's totally okay that you felt that way, but let us know like January, you know? Or like the movie comes out December 17th. Like, let us know December fucking 20th. You know what I mean? I would be totally fine if you said it December 18th but not before the 17th. Still, he adds, just because he spent the last five years perfecting his web slinging didn't mean that he could let himself get complacent. If you're not willing to focus and do the prep work, you're going to get called out, Holland says with a laugh, because when you're dealing with magic spells and dimensions, it really gets complicated. I agree with that statement, but I just feel like here it is again, another situation of Tom Holland saying too much. But the thing is, it's like he's saying too much without saying everything. You know what I mean? It's like you might as well be saying what's, what the fuck's going to happen. He ruined the ending of Infinity War before Infinity War came out. Did we forget about that? I sure haven't. Anyway, what did you guys think of this article of Tom Holland just saying too damn much? What did you think of my reaction to this information and reading all of it all together? If you liked what I had to say, leave a like and comment down below. And let me know anything else that you have in mind that you would like to see me react or comment on down below. Turn on that notification bell if you'd like to see this madness as soon as it comes out. I post here every single day. Whenever I see something I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about it. All right. Now, y'all enjoy the rest of your Friday evening. If y'all going to go out and see Halloween Kills, enjoy yourself. I'm definitely not going to be going tonight, but I will be seeing it tomorrow and I will be putting up a review after I see the film. Y'all have a great rest of your evening and enjoy your weekend. Stay safe, y'all. Chubby Nerds Unite. Later. Drop the bomb. <laughs>